video solution to one mark questions that appeared in 2015 CBSE class 10 board paper mathematics. This year, the one mark question section A had four questions. We got solutions to all four of them in this video. All four questions were easy questions. Let's get started with the first one. It's from quadratic equations. If x equals minus half is a solution of the quadratic equation of this equation, 3x square plus 2kx minus 3 equals 0, we need to find the value of k. Solving this question entails a very simple concept, which is if x equals minus half is a solution to this equation, substituting x as minus half in this equation should satisfy it. So all that we are going to be doing is we're going to be substituting x as minus half in this equation. So 3 into minus half square instead of x square, we're replacing it with minus half square plus 2k into minus half minus 3 equals 0. Minus half square is a 1 by 4. 3 into 1 by 4 is a 3 by 4. 2 gets cancelled with 2. k into minus 1 is a minus k minus 3 equals 0. Take k to the right hand side and keep the rest of it on the left hand side. So 3 by 4 minus 3 equals k. Take 4 as a common denominator. 3 minus 3 into 4 is a 12. 3 minus 12 by 4 is the value of k. 3 minus 12 is a minus 9. So the value of k equals minus 9 by 4. Quickly summarize it in a printed form. We're substituting x as minus 1 by 2 in this equation. So it becomes 3 into minus half square plus 2k into minus half minus 3. Solving for k, we get the value of k to be equal to minus 9 by 4. Let's move on to the second question. It's a little bit more difficult than the first one. This appeared from applications of trigonometry. The top of two towers of height x and y standing on level ground subtend angles of 30 degrees and 60 degrees respectively at the center of the line joining their feet. Find the ratio x is to y. We need to find the ratio of the heights of these two towers. Let's get started. Here is a schematic. The towers a, b and c, d measure basically or in the have heights of x and y. We are finding out the angles of elevation from the midpoint of the line joining the towers. The midpoint of the line joining the towers is O. O is the midpoint of BC, which means that BO will be equal to OC. These two are going to measure the same. The objective is to find out the ratio between X and Y. X is to Y equals what is what we need to find out. We've been given two angles, 60 degrees and 30 degrees. To angle 60 degrees, AB ends up being the opposite side. To the 60 degrees, BO happens to be the adjacent side. For angle 30 degrees, the measure of angle that we know in this tower, X, which is CD, is the opposite side and OC is equal to the adjacent side. We do not know the exact measure of OC or OB, but we know that OC equals OB. That's good enough to find out the ratio. Now, in these two right triangles, ABO and DCO, to angle 60 degrees, we know the opposite and adjacent side. To angle 30 degrees also, we know the opposite and adjacent side. So obviously, it makes sense to compute the trigonometric ratio that combines these two. The one that combines opposite and adjacent is basically tan. So let's go with tan of 60 degrees in triangle ABO. So tan 60 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is AB, divided by the adjacent side, which is equal to BO. Tan 60 degrees, the value equals root 3. AB equals Y divided by BO. So BO or Y can be written as BO times root 3 or root 3 times BO. So got the value of y in terms of BO. Let's run through the same exercise for the second triangle DCO. In this triangle, the angle of elevation equals 30 degrees. So tan 30 degrees equals the opposite side, which is DC divided by the adjacent side, which is equal to OC. Tan 30 we know equals 1 by root 3. DC equals X. OC is the same as BO. So let's write it as a BO. So what is X? x will be equal to 1 by root 3 times bo. We need to find out the ratio between x and y. You know x is equal to 1 by root 3 bo. The value of y is equal to root 3 bo. So the ratio is equal to 1 by root 3 bo is to root 3 bo. bo gets cancelled with bo. So ratio is 1 by root 3 is to root 3. Or we'll rewrite it a little differently. Let's multiply this entire ratio with root 3. 1 by root 3 into root 3, these two will get cancelled to leave us with a 1 root 3 into root 3 will give us a value which is equal to 3. So the ratio x is to y equals 1 is to 3. Whether you wrote it as 1 by root 3 is to root 3 or 1 is to 3 will get same one mark. Let's so quickly summarize it in a printed form. Looking at triangle ABO and we are looking at the angle 60 degrees which is BOA. Tan 60 is equal to opposite side AB divided by adjacent side BO. Tan 60 is a root 3. AB equals y. BO we are retaining it as BO. 
So y can be written as root 3 times b o. So this is root 3 b o. Let's run through the same exercise for triangle d c o in this slide. Triangle c o d, angle tan of c o d which is 30 degrees equals opposite side d c divided by adjacent side o c. Tan 30 is 1 by root 3, d c is x, o c equals b o. So we are replacing this o c with a b o. So x can be written as 1 by root 3 b o. x is to y therefore equals 1 by root 3 b o is to root 3 b o. b o gets cancelled with b o. So 1 by root 3 is to root 3 is the ratio or you can multiply it by root 3 and get the answer as 1 is to 3. So more to the third question. This question is from probability. Again a very simple question. A letter of the English alphabet is chosen at random. What is the probability that the chosen letter is a consonant? Right. There are 26 letters to the English alphabet. What is the breakup between vowels and consonants? Of these 26, 5 of them are vowels, 21 of them are consonants. To find the probability, we need a denominator and we need the numerator. In this case, the denominator is the number of ways of selecting a letter from the English alphabet. There are 26 letters in the English alphabet, so we can select one of them in 26 ways. The numerator is a favorable case. The number of ways in which we can select a consonant from the list of consonants. In how many ways can we select a consonant? There are 21 consonants. We can select one in 21 ways. So the required probability is equal to 21 by 26. Quickly summarize it in a printed form. A, E, I, O, U are the five vowels. So the remaining are the consonants. The required probability is the number of ways of choosing a consonant, which is 21 ways, divided by number of ways of choosing a letter of the English alphabet, which is 26. So answer is 21 by 26. Move on to the last question. Fourth question appeared from circles. In the adjacent figure, P A and P B are tangents to the circle with center O. So P A and P B are the tangents, O is the center of the circle, such that angle A P B equals 50 degrees. What we need to find out is the measure of angle O A B. How much is this is what we need to find out. We'll be using two concepts to solve this. Let's get started. The tangents from an external point measure the same. So P A equals P B. Essentially it translates to the fact that Triangle PAB is an isosceles triangle. If two sides are equal, then this triangle has to be an isosceles triangle. Two sides are equal, correspondingly to opposite angles will be equal. So let's take this angle to be equal to theta and this also to be equal to theta. In this triangle PAB, triangle PAB, some of the interior angles equals 180 degrees. So angle APB is one of the angles. Angle APB is one of the angles. Angle PAB and angle PBA are the other two angles. Some of these three angles will be equal to 180 degrees. APB measures 50. PAB and PBA are theta each. So we'll just add them together. Theta plus theta will be equal to 2 theta. This is equal to 180 degrees. It essentially means that 2 theta is equal to 130 degrees or theta is equal to 65 degrees. So concept 1, identifying that this triangle is an isosceles triangle and computing the value of this measure of theta to be equal to 65 degrees. So done this. This is not what we need to find out. We need to find out the measure of OAB. This is the angle we are interested in. The second concept comes by way of this property. It says that the angle between the tangent and the radius at the point where the tangent meets the circle is equal to 90 degrees. So angle PAO is equal to 90 degrees. Angle PAO is nothing but the sum of two angles. One angle is angle PAB, which is our theta. The other angle is what we are trying to find out, which is angle OAB. So 90 degrees is equal to, we have computed PAB to be equal to 65 degrees. 65 degrees plus the angle we have to compute. So angle OAB will therefore be equal to 90 minus 65. Angle OAB equals 90 minus 65, which is equal to 25 degrees. So we've used two properties. One, we have identified that from an external point, a tangent, two tangents can be drawn. Both will be equal in length. Therefore, the triangle PAB is an isosceles triangle. Using the fact that one of the angles is 50 degrees and the other two angles should measure the same, we computed the measure of angle PAB to be equal to 65 degrees. That's step number one using property one. Second property, the angle between a tangent and the radius will be 90 degrees where the tangent meets the circle. We use that property to establish that angle PAO equals 90 degrees. PAO is the sum of two angles, PAB and OAB. We computed PAB to be equal to 65 degrees, so finding OAB becomes very easy. Summarize it in a printed form. We have identified that these two angles are equal. We have used the sum of the three interior angles in triangle PAB to be equal to 180 degrees to find the measure of angle PAB as 65 degrees. Having done that, we have established that the angle PAO equals 90 degrees, which is sum of angle PAB and OAB. 
So 90 degrees equals this measure is 65. We computed in the last slide. So angle OAB equals 25 degrees.